Folks, thank you for watching this video. Please allow me to start with a recap of what I've posted on Twitter for those that may have missed it. For those that have seen the Twitter post, this video will go into greater detail and will include more up-to-date charts and information. As you can see, the automotive industry has had a very robust recovery since the recession in 2008. 2016 was a record-breaking year ending slightly higher than 2015 with a little more than 17.5 million nuke vehicles sold. As an automotive professional for the past 15 years, it makes me very happy to see the auto industry doing well. However, my concern is how we got there. As you can see in this chart, new vehicle sales have been steadily climbing since 2008. Along with record sales, we've also had record lease penetration numbers. Simplified, a lease is the difference between the sale price of a vehicle and the vehicle's projected value at lease end, otherwise known as the residual. The gap between the sale price and the residual is the most significant portion of the monthly payment. As the gap widens, the payments get larger, and as the gap narrows, the payments get smaller. What I want to focus on on this video is the effect of used car values on residual values, how they're calculated, how they impact sales, and the risk they represent when not properly managed. When new car sales dropped, as they did during the recession, less used vehicles came back to market. With a limited supply and demand picking up as we worked our way out of the recession, used car prices began rising rapidly. This is important to understand because manufacturers rely on current used car values to determine residual values. In reality, it's little more than a guess at what something will be worth in the future. As residual values rise, the gap between that value and the sale price narrows, making the payments over the same term smaller. The rapid rise in used car values and residuals has allowed consumers to use this method of financing to afford much higher priced vehicles than was previously possible. Consumers buy payments. The lower a payment goes, the larger the portion of the population can afford the product. A larger audience means more sales. There are two dangerous side effects to having higher than normal lease penetration percentages and ultra-high residuals. The first is the effect of high residuals on used car values. In order for used car prices to remain stable, there has to be a value proposition to purchasing a used vehicle. Let's use this vehicle for example. If you can lease a vehicle with a $41,800 MSRP for $439 per month, with what I would guess is little or no money down, how much would you be willing to pay for that same vehicle when the vehicle is one year old. $439 per month over a five year period equates to a $24,000 auto loan using a better than average interest rate. As a used car manager in charge of appraising that car, one must take into consideration what the vehicle will sell for based on comps and other alternatives. Is a $10,000 devaluation sufficient for that one year old vehicle? As large as that number may seem, the answer is no. The reason is because a $31,800 loan equates to a $582 car payment over a five-year term. Which would you choose? The $439 payment with little or no money down, on the brand new vehicle in the color that you like, with that smell that you love, or the higher payment on the one-year-old vehicle with a little wear and tear and possibly your second or third color choice. As an automotive professional, I know the answer and adjust what I'm willing to pay for the vehicle accordingly. Here's a look at a warning found in Mannheim's 2017 annual report. It states that wholesale prices declined in the final quarter of the year, due partly to higher wholesale supplies and partly to a more aggressive incentive spend in the new vehicle market. Given that the captive lessors have a residual exposure on some 10 million lease contracts outstanding, it's important that they balance future new vehicle volume objectives against the potential impact on used vehicle values. The problem is that the impact of high residual values and low lease payments has already affected used car values. Here's an example using the same vehicle. 
Infinity used a residual of $25,844 on this vehicle with 35,200 allowable miles. At the beginning of February, that same vehicle had an average auction transaction value of $18,050 with 35,200 miles. That's a $7,494 difference in what Infinity thought the vehicle would be worth at lease end and its current market value. Keep in mind that time also has a negative impact on value. And this lease still has another 15 months left till maturity. This is not an Infinity specific problem. Here's a look at the models with the highest lease penetration numbers. The majority of these leases are held by captive lenders. For example, Ford Credit, Infinity Financial, and BMW Financial Services. I'll show you one more example before moving on. BMW used a residual of $34,912 on this vehicle with 30,060 miles allowed. That same vehicle has an average auction transaction value of $25,400 with 30,600 miles. That's a $9,512 difference in what BMW thought the vehicle would be worth at lease end and its current market value. This particular lease has an additional seven months till maturity. The second danger side effect is excess supply. Leases have a clearly defined termination date and most have a three year duration. Because of that, we can calculate how many vehicles will be returning to the resale market and when. Too many of these vehicles returning at one time creates a surplus in supply which puts downward pressure on used car values. We can expect an additional 10% increase in returning leases this year versus 2016, a 25% increase in 2018, and a 37% increase in 2019. The effects are beginning to show and recent articles like this have popped up. This one reporting that Ford Credit is shaving $300 million from its financial forecast. Here's another stating their intentions to reduce their exposure to leases. This chart shows the average gain or loss on lease returns. Ford Credit experienced a loss in 2016 for the first time since 2008. The losses from 2016 resemble the losses from 2007. Will the losses from 2017 resemble those from 2008? Time will tell. So why does this matter? Does it stop with residual losses shouldered by manufacturers' captive banks? In my humble opinion, the answer is no. This is not simply about residual losses, and it matters because used car values are critical to new car sales performance. When used car values drop, residual values soon follow. A lower residual widens the gap between the sale price and its value, which results in higher monthly payments. Manufacturers have already begun to taper residual values in response to the accelerated decline in used car values. Here's another clip from Mannheim's 2017 annual report stating that the fourth quarter was flat. This leveling off in lease originations and the penetration rate reflected responsible business practices on the part of lessors as they refused to pursue volume at any cost. They also reached the dollar limit of the amount of residual exposure they're willing to hold. Leasing was responsible for a little over 30% of all retail sales last year. What happens when 30% of the business contracts due to less attractive lease payments? The other factor to consider is velocity of sales. Most new vehicle transactions involve a trade vehicle. The speed with which a consumer can trade their used vehicle for a new model is critically important to new car sales. When used car values are strong, clients are able to trade in shorter trade cycles. When used car values fall at a faster than normal rate, clients tend to keep their vehicles longer. A new vehicle transaction often fails when the potential client is told that the value of their trade vehicle is much lower than the amount owed. 
few will elect to roll negative equity into a new loan and raise their monthly payments. In extreme cases, rolling negative equity is not an option without a large down payment due to loan-to-value restrictions from lenders. Here's another portion from Mannheim's 2017 annual report stating that, unfortunately, such equity positions and lease contracts are now rare. My guess is that you'll see a lot more headlines like this as velocity continues to slow and manufacturers do their best to control supply. So what's holding it all up? The last leg of the stool, in my opinion, is the larger vehicle market. As you can see in this chart, wholesale prices of SUVs and vans have performed well in the last four years. Wholesale prices for trucks have been very strong in the pickup truck market. As I have illustrated earlier in this video, strong used car prices are the foundation for strong new car sales and the larger vehicle market was responsible for over 60% of total sales last year. The American consumer has shown us time and time again that larger vehicles are their preference. The problem with this segment is that the larger vehicle market, particularly pickup trucks, is very sensitive to fuel prices. Here's a look at oil prices dating back to 2008. Oil prices peaked in the middle of 2008, then they crashed to a low in early 2009. This is about the same time that light truck sales bottomed and took off. We have enjoyed low fuel prices for a very long time. A rise in fuel prices would lead to higher operating costs and a decline in sales. Without the profits generated from this segment, manufacturers will no longer be able to support new car sales with subsidies like rebates and subvented interest rates. This is why I refer to this segment as the last leg of the stool. There are other risks to consider as well. For example, the number of 90-day plus delinquent auto loans and the number of repossessions are both steadily increasing. This can quickly get out of hand since we have a record level of automotive debt with used car values declining at an accelerated pace. Outstanding debt is not a problem when the asset that secures it is stable, but that's clearly not the case here. In the end, as complicated as this may seem, it's going to be a simple supply and demand story. Anything that brings additional supply to the market on top of the glut of maturing leases will only put more pressure on used car prices and further compound the problem. Folks, I want to give you a sincere thank you for watching. If you found the information helpful, please pass it along to your friends, family, and coworkers. Cheers.